what's happening, everyone? Welcome to Thursday Night Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks. Back at it. Voice is pretty much back. It's still a little tick on the back of my throat, but I should be fine. I figured out a few things to do ahead of time to make sure I don't cough the whole time. Uh, part of it is not talking so loud. <clears throat> but, all in all, much better. Uh, thanks for everyone's patience. And, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Gary. Um... Yeah, now, so now Kaylee has what I had, so she's in bed, and she's been sick all week, and I've just had the cough. Um, <clears throat> it's still there a little bit, but it's really not bad. It's just a little lingering uh, thing, but it's been going around the house. It went from my wife to me to my daughter, and yeah, it's been just a, like a summer flu, and just uh, the cough's the only thing that's lingering. So, uh, yep, yep, Mom, Kaylee's, Kaylee's got it too, yeah. Hey, Mike, what's going on, man? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, feeling better. <coughs> Just a little bit of lingering. Stay hydrated, and she'll be all good to go. So, let me see. We got going on tonight. We got 21 people in here. Thank you for all popping in. <coughs> Much appreciated. All right. So, I'm going to ease back into it. Um... I didn't come up with anything majorly new, but this is what I wanted to do last week, so I'm going to do it now. This was a painting I did a few weeks ago. Um, went great, everyone loved it, and I really wanted to expand on it. And I had cut some extra panels, and I had cut some extra masks. And we took a poll, and everyone asked for the um, <clears throat> everyone asked for the American flag. American flag was winning the poll, so we are going to do that tonight. And talk about the panel I got here. This panel is a hair smaller. This is a 9 by 12 panel. But the same size skull. And uh, I'm recording this. And basically what I want to do is I want to add to the how-to, which I recorded last time. And so during the how-to, I could kind of switch to a few different versions. <clears throat> and this one has a water droplet effect. So what I did with this panel, panel was uh, this is an aluminum panel with the PVC core scuffed it down sanded it down and then I did a water droplet effect which is just I sprayed water on it and then I put I used a blue autoborn sealer uh, blue and white mix and I sprayed it at one angle and just let it dry out in the sun and you get that water droplet effect this I didn't really go for the water droplet because I didn't want that I wanted kind of just a kind of organic kind of thing so I think it'll be cool for the background I'm debating <clears throat> I think I'm gonna flip it over and have the heavier texture up here in the light down the bottom. So, um, the other thing I wanted to do tonight was for those who don't have a plotter, if you don't have a plotter, this can be done with paper cut. So, what I did is I printed this out. So, I'm gonna go back and forth. <coughs> this is printed out the same size as my plot file, which I did before, so I can use it for both. So I can kind of switch back and forth from the mask to a loose stencil and show you different options. And if you don't have a plotter, you could run this whole thing simply with a paper cut and a printout um, and do everything I'm doing here. It get a little complicated with some of the masking, but um, you can effectively do it. Hydrate. That's you we got on, on tonight. Hey, Vic, how's it going? Thanks for popping in from Edmonton. Max Thrasher, Cody Adam, Steve Leahy. <coughs> Jim Watson over on Facebook. How you doing, bud? Um, yeah, I got 30 of you. And yeah, I mean, I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me. All the new members who have joined up. I want to give a special shout out to a lot of you guys who may or may not be here. Um, as you know, we usually talk about my sponsors and... You know, not really the sponsor, but the products we like to use on here. Everything used tonight. This is all going to be done in Createx Colors. Uh, mostly the color list I'm doing. I'll bring up the list. It's the same as the last one. <coughs> so we have our 40 limb reducer, 40 20 mix, uh, a little bit of 40 50 clear, uh, a 50 68 opaque white. Then we got black. <coughs> sorry, uh, black candy. 5053 scarlet and the cerulean blue. That's the colors we're using for tonight. Uh, which is the same we did for the last one. And, of course, we got our FPS mask. For this one, I'm using the blue mask. Uh, this is what I cut everything out of. <clears throat> one thing I would recommend you could do, 
do the initial skull cut, which is this one here, um, in the blue mask, and then the flag overlay you can do in the green. Because the green mask, you can see through, it's more transparent, so you might find an easier time with that. <clears throat> All right. And the other thing I really want to thank tonight is all the new members who have joined up. And I want to give you guys a special thanks to all my supporters. But just as everyone, give a special shout out to all you guys. Thank you for joining the membership team. And that gives you 10% off anything in the store. This shout out, big thank you to everyone. It's going to help this video grow and grow and grow. The more and more we get, the better off we're going to be. And I can do more and more content. So I want to thank each and every one of you guys. Thank you for your support. And uh, thanks for looking out. And we'll keep growing this family. Let's get to painting. All right. First things first, got to get the masking on. And so I have my skull here. Okay. It's been... Um, I did the charcoal, which I talked about last video, where I kind of rubbed the charcoal over the cut so you can see the cuts better. Put the transfer tape on. We're going to put this guy right in the middle. And we are going to use the hinge technique. Thanks for popping in from New York. <clears throat> yeah, my cough is better. The ratio is better. So, it's still there. Um, I did get some, like, throat, like, chloroseptic type stuff. <coughs> we'll see if that helps or hurts. But... London Paint Company, what's going on, brother? Carlos Felix, what's going on? Larry Mason, Styles. Thanks for popping in. All right, so we got our panel here. Hinge technique, put a piece of tape across the top. That way, everything's locked in. Um, something this simple and flat, you can just do a top down, but I, I always do a hinge. I've always liked it better. Uh, it gives me more control, especially over my mask, if anything kind of breaks loose. And roll this back. And yeah, for those who watched a couple weeks ago, this is the same process, but why not go through it again? And when I do the full edit, we'll have we'll have a lot more footage to mess with. Squeeze you that down, get that all in place, all the air bubbles out, and then this is the most key, pull the hinge. Okay. I don't know if you mentioned your background earlier or not. No, oh, background, for those who don't know, I've been, shoot, I've been doing airbrush work and custom paint since 1989 as a kid. I uh, started as a t-shirt airbrush artist back then. That was kind of the thing. I was through high school and got out of that, started getting into automotive custom paint. A couple motorcycles here and there, race cars, drag cars, helmets. Um, had a regular job, and then I started getting in a lot of a lot of more motorcycle work is what I focused on. And then when I went full time, I worked out of a sign company. So when I wasn't painting bikes, I you know used to hang signs and hang off skyscrapers and buildings and do neon lettering. And but they had a vinyl cutter there, and which is how I originally started working with them because I would come in, they would do a lot of vinyl signs, and I would come in and airbrush backgrounds and things like that. I started integrating the plotter into my work a lot more and more. And then, you know, just over the years developed different techniques and different styles and different ways of painting and brought it all to you guys. That's kind of the short of it. Um, so as you see, there's my panel. Let's give you a single cam view here. So the reason why you can see all the cuts, and this has been cut for over a week, so, you know, you can really see them. But I use just a little bit of powdered charcoal and I rub it in there so that way uh, it fills in all the cuts. It's much easier to see. And this panel's a little smaller. And I cut this mask a little smaller, so I'm just gonna cover both edges. I don't want to get anything in there. Oh yeah, I've already talked about the background. Water droplet effect on sanded black aluminum. Yeah, just a little bit of blue base. And that's about it. So, 
what do we do first? We are on a dark surface, I think. I, I'm going to do another video on this, but not next week. I'm going to let it rest for a little bit. But I'm going to do another one in the future on a light color panel, which is similar to how we did the um, the Uncle Sam, the Uncle Scully. is very similar, the, the process. But that way you can see pluses and minuses of which way to go. Um, first colors I'm going to start with is white. And I am going to turn my compressor on. Now let's go up to the uh, split. All right. So I'm going to use my clips here. We're going to start white. Honey, thank you very much. Yes, feeling much better. Uh, yeah, I was feeling fine last week. It was just a damn cough, man. I couldn't get past a sentence. At all. It's horrible. So again, my color here is this is just the 50 5068 opaque white. Honey, did you catch the shout out? We got you for all my all my down and dirty trickster members. Give you a little another one. Where are you? There you are. Top of the third column. All right, and because we're on a dark surface, we're going to work foreground to background. Okay, so when you work foreground to background, we're going to look for what's most in the foreground. In this case, it's going to be the teeth. And these are kind of close to each other. I'm just going to pull both middles because they're the most foreground. I'm going to work our way back, okay? This will be pretty quick. I am going to do a couple of different I'm going to do some different eyes in this one. So this want to be a little different than the American flag one. The other thing you can do here, uh, if you don't want to go pure white, and I'm going pure white because we're going to be doing an overlay, but you could go gray uh, and then bring in the brighter whites later. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Much, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we're going to do the bottom two teeth. And these are just soft dagger strokes. Remember, I'm not going for detail because we're going to do the flag overlay. All the details are going to be carved in later. So I just, I'm building structure and tone. And I'm being very personal with my paint. I don't want to put it dry. Yeah, a lot of guys make the mistake of putting their paint really dry at this stage, and that's where you get D-lamps, because you'll put dry paint down, and the paint will get what's called airborne loss of solvent, which means it starts to dry out in the air. And when it starts to dry out in the air, you get a chalky mess kind of there, and it looks fine, but then you put masking on top of it, and that's when it peels. Uh, or a lot of times you'll put the chalk down, and then you'll start doing wet paint, and now you have wet paint skinned on top of dry powder. So you want to make sure, especially at the beginning stages, your structure is like a medium wet paint. But notice what I'm doing. I'm only painting in the center. Then the overspray cast over and doing a nice kind of dagger stroke, um, like a soft dagger. There you go. You got your more cowbells there. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Yep, for those who are members, you get your special icons, and we had to do the more cowbell. So yeah, I think this time I'm going to do like, um, I'm going to do eyes kind of like, um, almost like they're kind of fleshy like this. You know, so, so almost flesh in here, and you can see the eyelids, as opposed to like, you know, big like this. I think when I do my next ones, I'll do them like this. I'll do the Canadian flag with like this one. But I want to do this one almost like this, still like eyelids in here and like some flesh. Um, I think it'll be kind of a cool look. This is the plan. Shy Customs, what's going on, man?
next week we'll start planning some new projects and then believe it or not we're gonna start planning for SEMA the SEMA show in Vegas I'm then on the phone this week with a few different places got some big plans for a couple of different brands we're gonna be working with and I think for one of them I'm gonna do a painting that's gonna be on display at SEMA so I think the plan is gonna be to start it here and work through the whole thing um, live for you guys. Oops, that one I pulled two off. I should know, but that was fine. And we'll do the painting live here, and you guys can see it. Anyone who's at SEMA is going to be able to come and, and see it, and maybe we'll even bid on it, and we're we'll lucky when it can come pick it up at SEMA. We'll figure out logistics. Honey, shine, you guys are awesome. Thank you. I really gotta get the sound to go into the board differently, but we'll get there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. We said out of this whole thing, the teeth is probably the longest part. Um, and I think my plan is gonna be to do almost as many flags as I can. And then maybe make this, I'm going to scan these and maybe make like a sticker collection series or some shirts or something like that. I definitely want to do some more with this design. So we've talked about it. We haven't actually talked about it in a few videos. The reason why I use plotted files versus hand cut. Like I said, you could print this on paper, transfer the image, and you could hand cut all this stuff, which is how I used to always do it, and pick and pull each one in the same order. You don't need to have a plotter. The nice thing about a plotter, obviously I can do this multiple times, um, and I can put this on the surface of the, the metal, and I never actually have to cut directly on the metal surface, which means I'm not messing up my base coat at all or doing anything like that. So there is a big plus to doing that. All right, so now we're gonna look. Well, I'm gonna do this time. I'm gonna pull, kind of pick this out. And I'm gonna hit this nose bridge first. And I just kind of tore it. So I'm just putting the paint up there. I'm not really trying to get to the very edges of everything. Then I'm gonna do the eyebrows. So I'm going to start with these guys. I'm going to pull these. And now I'm going to do a core highlight. So I'm not putting the paint right to the edge of the mask here or here. I'm putting the bulk of it in the center and doing a nice flood stroke and I'm doing a soft dagger and I'm going this way. So if you watch, see how I'm putting it right there, that hot spot? Basically, I'm painting the highlight as opposed to painting the shadow like when you're a light color. And the overspray is actually going to get up to everything, okay? And I'm trying not to get it on that line. And I'm just coming down like this and staying in the center. There's still going to be some texture back here. You're not going to see a ton of it, but there's going to be a little bit of the skull. It's just going to add to it. The main texture is going to stay to the outside. Hey, Chris, thanks for popping in. Another official down dirty trickster. So now I can pop this guy here. And I can kind of fold all the way around. See that? Because I paint to this edge, now when I pull this, I get a nice kind of overlap right there. And I just pull it through like that. I, you know, I've done it before where I've basically made this like a pole connection. But what happens when you do that, people tend to paint the whole thing like a shape. And then they get this like almost robotic looking thing because they painted the edge. By doing this, it's, I'm forcing you to try to control your overspray. Because I want you to keep your overspray out of here. Okay? I don't want that there. And by putting the direction, you won't do it. That's kind of the point of this. I could, like I said, I could have cut this into a bunch of sections so each one pulls off, but it's really about a fold back technique. So now onto here, I'm doing the eyelid like the light's coming down. We talked about it last week here. We got the skull. 
See where that edge is hitting right there, that highlight edge? This is what we're painting right there. It's right at the edge, but I'm not painting super hard at the edge. And I want the overspray to cast, because remember, an eye socket is a socket, not a hole. And the eye actually rolls in to the eyelid itself. This also, you can add more texture if you want to use a little Gerald Mendez texture effects. You can put some stuff in here right now. If you want, that's all going to just kind of be there because we do the overlay. Gerald Mendez popped in as soon as I picked up your stencil. How you doing, my friend? Thanks for popping in. So I just pulled that down. That still leaves this little cheekbone here. I can kind of come up that cheekbone. And down from the center of the nose, right to the center of those two front teeth. Nice little soft stroke. I'm not trying to do any line work in here. I'm just trying to build some shape so the flag overlay has something to work with. See, we're already kind of building that tone and shape. Now what I do is from the teeth, right in the center, I do little soft dagger strokes up. And just kind of blend shade back in. Now you're automatically getting that nice radius. I'm gonna pull the rest of the eyebrows off here. And I can actually pull the whole the whole head. So now I got a lot of nice texture because that was that background texture. I can hit these eyebrows. There they are. Kind of get the head a little bit. And now the brightest part, when you look at this right on, you see the light source is hitting right in the center. You're seeing three on mine because I got so many lights here in the studio, but we're going to focus on this kind of main center right here, this bright area. See that center? That's kind of what we're going to focus on. And I'll get a little bit right up here because that's kind of where the side of the skull is, the temples. And then we can pull the mask off. Let's get some more texture up in here as well. Since we're going to have the stars and stripes up here, we're going to have a little bit going on. And because the stars are going to be here, we definitely want some white. Like I said, I'm just setting this up because most of detail, I just want to see it so when we go back in later, we can shape everything with the black, you know, which is going to be like candy purplish black. Okay, so we can pull the nose out now. Actually, I want to get it really bright around that nose. And that way in the center, we can softly bring that septum up the middle. And you're softening that hard edge, but you're not getting rid of it. I want to get a little bit more paint on the edge so I get a little bit more delineation. That's why I just folded it back and then looked at it. And for the eyes, like I said, I want to do kind of a... Oh, Gary's got a bid. I am solo tonight, so I'm going to try to keep an eye on everything. If I miss something, I will go back and watch. Let's, uh, I'm going to do this. Pen. There we go. I got a bid going. We got Gary. At 175 for the bids. Cool. All right. So for the eye, I want to do kind of a fleshy eye. So I'm going to do just like I did that soft stroke here. Watch. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just a soft little dagger stroke, right? Where the eye was going to be. Same thing. And then I'm going to go above it where like an eyelid will be. 
and below it. See what I'm doing? Most of the detail is going to be done later after we get the color in. But you'll have that eye kind of established. And it's kind of inside this fleshy pocket here. I want to just get a little bit brighter. Kind of where that eyebrow is. And that sets up the whole top of the skull. There'll be a little crack coming down here. We'll have another crack coming off this. And that can kind of continue up. I'm coming out of the jaw. Now, if you were just doing a skull without the flags, you could just start detailing from here and finish this thing off. Front part of the lower jaw. Now we pull everything off. And like I said, you can still see that background texture through it. It's just giving the skull a little bit more texture to go on. The core highlight. <clears throat> the jaw there. And then we'll do some little daggers coming down here to kind of set up. And just like the first one, it goes pretty quick. So half an hour with talking, not too bad. If you get really, really, really good at this and proficient, you could probably knock this part out in about 15 minutes. Which is cool. What I should do one day is just sit down and line up like 10 of these on a board and paint them out at this point so I can just, you know, either do a video one day or just record them and just do all the different flag overlays and one after another. Um, so, flag. We're going to do the American flag overlay. And this is a good time to kind of refresh on how <coughs> I line everything up. In all the files, they all have these three circles. Okay? They have these three circles in them. These three circles I put in as registration points. So when you cut your secondary mask, okay, whichever flag you're going to do, in this case the American flag, all you have to do is make sure two out of the three are lined up, because if two are lined up, all the rest will line up. You get all three to line up, you're perfect, you're good to go. And everything will line up in spot. And you usually try to have your tape ready at the same time. So I go here, do, 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 do. line you up, good, line you up. And then I do another hinge. I go right across the center, grab my squeegee. This paint should be dry enough now. And that's the other thing is I don't go too wet or too dry. If you're worried, you can check it. You can always tack it off as well. And we'll pull this guy back. We'll lay that in place. This is the same order, same process we did on the flag of Puerto Rico, which was this guy here. So same process, just different flag pattern. Okay.
And see, we're lined up pretty good. We may be, I might be a 64th of an inch off to one side. <clears throat> but that's even easily remedied when you paint. Like I said, if you wanted to, to make it easier <coughs> to line up, and I do this on three-dimensional stuff, instead of using the blue mask, I would cut the FBS green, which is transparent. But if you look through it, you can almost see through this. You can see this go underneath. <coughs> and we're getting to the blue. Now if you look real close, I got a little there. I'm a little sweaty because it's hot up here. And I got a little bit pulled off. Easy fix. Again, this is right now you're still only kind of mid-tone painting. And because this is a flag, I can actually kind of put some folds and streaks in now. If I want. before I switch to the blue. For the blue, I'm using the 5060 uh, Cerulean Blue. Maybe 10%, 5% reduction. Uh, I do put a little 4050 in, maybe 5% max when I'm doing this stuff. Um, just because I want it good and sticky, and I'm not doing any erasing techniques. Without the erasing techniques, it's easy. And when I flood this blue, I'm, again, medium wet. I'm not trying to, like, kill any shading or detail I've already done. I want to see it. I can do a couple little folds, things like that. Is a Cricut machine good? It's a loaded question. So, I... For a, a crafting machine, my personal recommendation is the Cameo Silhouette. <clears throat> Sorry, the Cameo Silhouette. I think it's a better machine, and their software is much nicer and more user-friendly. The Cricut is a nice machine. The problem is the software is horrible to work within for anything that's not designed by Cricut for Cricut. So when you do outside stuff like mine or other complex work, Cricut does funny things to the images because it's kind of a... It's a closed software, so I am not a big fan of Cricut. I had to spend about four hours of my day doing a help video <coughs> to help Cricut users because Cricut decided to change their format. And when you go to print a skull like this, it tries to be efficient and use less vinyl, so it just moves it moves your image all around. It, move, it it decides where it wants to cut versus leaving it as it is. Unless you go in and do some ungrouping and some switching around and then attaching everything, which is stupid because the default should be to leave it together and not mess with someone else's files. Um, but it decides it wants to make changes. So I'm not a fan of... Not a fan. Just not a fan. Now I'm going to pull off where the red stripes are going to be. It's going to be there. And I just got to basically, I just got to cover up right in here. But before I do that, I'm going to pull off the stars. That'll give the blue a little bit more time to dry before I mask over. So remember, in this file set, <coughs> uh, let's see, do I have... So the file set itself has, I'll bring up the um, title image. So it has all these different skulls, all these different flags, and I've actually added 
Um, <coughs> a whole Scandinavian section. So you can do Norway, Sweden, Denmark. You can do all that. <coughs> well, you mix the paints based on whatever paint you're using. So, like I was just saying, I'm using the Createx colors. And I'm adding about 5%, 40-50, and about 5% reducer to them with this airbrush. If you're using a different airbrush at different pressures, you may reduce more or less. <clears throat> so I always recommend, depending on the paint you use, you want to you want to start with their baseline mixtures and kind of find your sweet spot from there. And remember, most paint mixtures are designed for spraying, like when you're doing solvent, like how it's called a PPG, DuPont, Orion, all that stuff. Their mixtures are designed for spraying out of a large gun. So, for example, House of Colors typically a two-to-one mixture, two parts paint, one part reducer. But when you're airbrushing, you're doing a one-to-one -one because airbrushing is a much smaller nozzle. You're laying much finer paint, so you typically you need the paint reduced more. For the money you Yeah, the U.S. cutter ones are all right. If you're going to go with a big format cutter, the you and you're doing it part-time here and there, the U.S. cutters are fine. They work great. They're plastic gear-driven. Uh, they tend to be a little noisy. Um, but they work fine. The nice thing about like craft cutters for most people, if you're doing motorcycles and cars, the Cameo is a pretty good size. I use a full size plotter. I use I use a 24 inch. Um, a 28 inch machine doesn't benefit you at all because most rolls when you buy rolls of vinyl come in 24, 48, or uh, 60 inch wide rolls. So the 28 and 30 inch plotters and now Roland's doing a 30 inch plotter. It's useless because you're not getting 30 inch rolls of medium because all the stuff out there is 24 or 36, 48. <laughs> so I'm a rolling guy. I've always liked rolling plotters. Um, you buy it once and you forget about it. Yeah, it's expensive. It's twice to three times the money as a U.S. cutter one. Um, but my Roland is 17 years old. I've only ever changed a blade on it and I can cut eighth inch times Roman uh, eighth inch times Roman um, lettering. So that's that's what I'm a fan of. Okay, so back to this. We have that. This is already masked, so it's going to stay white, so I don't need to do anything. Um, realistically, I just need to cover, and I'm going to use some vinyl. I just need to cover this section, then I can tape the rest out. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can put another piece of mask and cut it. Um, if you want to put a knife to the surface. If you don't, just do this. And take some fine line tape and just kind of bend it in position. Easy peasy. And now I can just kind of back mask off from that. I'm rolling. Yep, the GS24. Is, I, I have the GX, which is the model before the GS. And what's nice about the GS, the GS cuts on the outside of the roller, so you can get a full 24-inch cut, whereas the old ones, you had to lose uh, a quarter inch off each side for the rollers. Um, so the GS definitely was a step up, and it's super exact. Now, I did hear the only thing they did is the gears aren't as, like, super strong. But, I don't know, that's kind of a mixed reviews I've heard. Like, because the, the GX was such an old school beast that it's, like, very... It's like a tank. So, but I I love the GS24. Now they have a newer one. Warlock, what's going on, man? Thanks for popping in. It's, I'm running solo tonight, so if you're on while people are bidding, please help me keep track. We got Gary... Gary in at 175 at this is the current bid. We got some super chats. And we got everyone who's starting to join up in membership. Thank you all. Alright, so we went from blue. I'm just gonna I'm gonna minimize my airbrush use tonight. The amount of 
a number of airbrushes I have to clean. So I'm gonna do a quick change, flush out my blue. I'm gonna go with our scarlet red. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good. I'm like I still I'm still chasing the cough a little bit. Um, which you notice I have no whiskey tonight because it does kind of make me cough a little more. <laughs> there are companies that will cut down. Yeah, you can get you can but basically you have to buy a, a 60 inch roll and then then cut it because I, I have my my sign company does that for me as well. But the extra two inches, three inches, eh. I like I never bothered with a 50 inch cutter, even for doing what I was doing like big trucks and like semis. I don't want to manhandle a roll bigger than 24 inch. At that point, I'll just seam it together. So I never bothered with something. I never felt the need to, to get much bigger and take up a big part of the shop. All right. So now we've got a scarlet red, same thing. The reason I'm not using opaques, I, I want to keep that texture. So the nice thing about the scarlet red or some of the other illustration color reds is they, um, they're they semi-transparent. I could use candies, but what I always found with candies this stage, unless you flood it enough, you get a lot of, um, you get really pinky. Or sometimes orangey, depending on the brand candy you're using. So I'm just using illustration red. Let's see, Darren. I have a friend that will cut it off fast by rolling. Cut. Yeah, the rollins are super fast or quiet. I was at my buddy's. Uh, so I was at uh, Rhino's when we were doing some work out in Cali, uh, and he has a U.S. cutter. And man, that thing is—it cuts great. It does. It does the job. But man, it's noisy. It's, like, it's really loud. Then you plug the roll and then it's like wee, 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 wee. It's super quiet. The cam the cameos and the crickets are pretty loud too, actually. So you know what it is? There's a lot of plastic in the parts. The more plastic inside, the, the louder those things are. So here's the roll, Bobby. If you're gonna be, it doesn't matter how good you are now. You're just gonna get better. So buy it once, buy it once, cry once, and then you never have to worry about it again. That's it. You suck it up. You buy the best machine or the best like airbrushes. I bought the, you know, the workhorse, the best money I could afford at the time. I never buy a Micron or anything like that because you don't need them out of the gate. But I wasn't buying a twenty dollar knockoff. I bought an Iwata or my first airbrush actually Pache's. If you buy a good quality thing, spend the money once, it'll stick with you forever. Like I said, my roll is 17 years old. I don't know anyone with a U.S. cutter that's had them last that long, if they use them consistently. Like, I use them, I'm using them, you know, every day or so, so. And I get paid nothing from Roland. Or another company I like, too, is um, Graftech. Graftech makes a really nice machine. Uh, those are probably the two, and if you want to go all out with the ultimate beast in detail, uh, is the Suma plotters. What's cool about Suma plotters is um, they can actually do pounce patterns. So instead of putting a, a, just a blade or a pen, you can put a needle in, and it'll go do, 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 and make an actually perforated pounce pattern, like an old school pattern that you could put in a wall and chalk through, and then do all your freehand work. That's that's. That's what the, the Suma plotters can do. I think they're the only ones that actually do it. I could be wrong. They might be for other brands. So now that that's done. Doo -doo -doo -doo, look at that. You can see all the work through. And this was no candies. I was just using a semi-transparent. This is Createx Illustration Colors. The Scarlet. Pull everything there, pull everything there. Ta-da! 
Got better than investing in somebody. Oh yeah, we've learned with the airbrushes, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of it online and I mean I I bite my tongue a lot. There's a lot of posts like, hey, how about this Harbor Freight thing? And how about this Mastercraft from Amazon as Amazon package? And I can't answer every one of those questions where they'll be like, oh yeah, it's great. Good job. Uh, chances are it's gonna it's you gotta use it once, it's gonna work right out of the box, you gotta take it apart two or three times, it's not gonna seat well back together, it's gonna bust, it's gonna break, it's gonna be horrible. And then, you know, people hate the craft. So Yeah, Sumas are just Sumas aren't even the Cadillacs. I think Rollins Rollins and stuff are the Cadillacs. Graftex, I mean Sumas are like they're like the friggin' you know, hypercar hand built like Rolls Royce of the industry, I would say. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to break out some highlights where I know these eyes are going to be brighter. Okay. You guys kind of see the eye glowing through there, which I think looks really cool. I'm going to do a soft stroke right up the nose. That brings that nose forward. So it's already down below. The teeth, I'm just highlighting them. I don't want to lose the red. Okay, but just enough to get that radius again. Same thing here with the cheekbone. I'm just trying to bring that radius in, but I'm not killing the red. I'm just highlighting. Just highlighting that. Uh, I'd see. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. But like that being said, U.S. cutters make some nice cutters, um, and they're not pieces of crap. They're just they're lower. They're lower on the like totem pole, um, and they're gonna do you just fine. What I like about uh, let me bring my face back up here. What I do like about cameos and crickets is you can load paper in and you can cut hard stencils like this out of like cardstock and you know thinner thinner like balsa wood materials not really balsa wood but there's materials like it um thin ev foams and paper and things like that as well as vinyl transfers vinyl stickers and roll material um that's the nice thing about having a craft cutter to start with because you can cut both sticker material like what I'm using here vinyl and you can cut hard stencils so you can design something like this and cut a hard stencil and use it uh, you can actually cut mylars and stuff like that too so that's another that's one reason I bought a craft cutter um, my next purchase down the road is going to be a laser cutter uh, I just haven't wanted to pull the trigger on the expense uh, for one I'd like to make some other stencils in the marketplace that go with my work aside from you know, aside from Pocket Graphics, which is made by I Want an Art Tool and then my Pack of Skull series, you know, those are out all over the marketplace. But I want to start making some small run stencils that, you know, then we're not going to sell them globally like the volume we would do with these. So, you know, I Want is not going to, you know, put a whole product skew in, but I want to start doing some own, my own. I have cricket, but yeah, design space is horrible. I, that's what I went and fought with all week this week was design space. You can still design another program, like I design an illustrator and then bring it in, right? You still gotta fight with design space a little bit. Alright. So now I got that kind of I worked that shape back in. That's not my final, I'll probably go back in the end. But that's principal detail. Um there's the red. I'm gonna get that red a little brighter on the side. What kind? Of, yeah. What, um, do you got like a high end laser that would cut like super detail? Or is it more like a craft laser cutter? Because that's kind of what I've been finding when I look at. It. It's like there's good laser cutters that'll cut. But when you try to cut micro, you need a really expensive one. Or if you're cutting through thick materials, I just, I don't know enough about them. Um, and there's some good guys that I know in the industry that I can ask. I just haven't. 
you know, I looked at the Glow Forge. I'm like, that oh, looks all right, but it's probably, I don't know, it's actually just too crafty of a machine and not like, you know, if I try to cut a hundred stencils for like a product line, am I going to just burn the machine out the first use? Thank you, honey. But you can see, you know, same process we did here. I'm just, I'm changing the skull up a little bit so it has eyes this time and different flag overlay. The other thing I want to do with this one is I did mix up a little cobalt blue and I want to get some cobalt blue like over here on the dark side without killing the stars. I'm just going to get a couple wrinkles of blue in there like that. Good, good, good. That's be a nice one to add to the collection. All right, so now we're doing the black. My voice is making it through tonight, which is awesome. Yay. Yay voice. An AP laser. Patrons are special things it does. Go for it is nice, but overpriced the power. Yeah, I, I, I'd i say the... Yeah, I, that's kind of what I what I looked at for the Glowforge. Like, it looks cool. It's packaged well. But maybe too crafty. Oh, honey, thank you very much. Oh, honey's gonna have the collection. Oops, wrong one. All right. So at this point, oh, this is what I want to talk about. So remember at this point last week, I said it's nothing but net, it's freehand at this point. Not true. Now if you don't want to plot and stick another one, this is where a paper cut comes in. Now when I print this, I make sure I print it sized one to one. So therefore, it's identical in size. And now, you have a stencil that you don't have to stick, but you can get here even faster. Or if you don't have that kind of freehand ability, you know, I can get I can be kind of loose here and get that shadow in first. See that? Nice and simple. And I can start to carve that out. I can cut up to three quarter inch plywood. Really? Ah, oh, that's impressive. I didn't think you could cut through that much with that. And I don't need that. I look for more, uh, I want to be able to cut through mylars, very, very um, detailed stuff. Oops, wrong button. There we go. I want to bring that back up. Yeah, I think the Glowforge is like four grand, where I think you can get like an actual like, you know, professional grade laser cutter, higher wattage, higher power for for that. You know, but you're more on your own, which is fine. I don't need design help and software and you know all that crap. So now that I have that, so now I can start detailing. And yes, freehanding ability is going to be key here. And I can kind of soften that stencil out by just going to those edges. Let me, um, I wonder if I can, yeah, I can try to zoom in on that. How's that? I'll zoom in here a little bit. We'll zoom in here a little bit. Make sure we're focused. Is that good? I think that's good. But now we're going to do that eye. So this is where you got nothing but net. I'm doing the eye. I'm doing the lower lid, kind of poking around the eye. And the upper lid. And then I'm going to shade that. I'm 
We'll put a little coarse shadow in there as well. Make sure we're dark. And now you can really see that kind of working out. You wouldn't need a medium power with a detail lens. You can get different lenses allowed. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, there's enough lace designs in the market. I just buy it and use it. Um, there's some good expensive lace you can buy. And I don't want a laser cut lace. You know, the thing when you do a lace job on a bike or car, you want that fabric. Because you want to actually stretch. Um, and you really need the, the fabric to hold those patterns together without being a thousand pieces of masking to pick and pull. Oh, very cool, Darren. Yeah, so I kind of wish I brought the red up higher on this one. Um, so like this eye will be fine. Because it's going to be mostly in the red, this eyeball. It's custom. First time doing it. But yeah, so when you look out, you can still see that eye glow. And I'll make it dark and I'll highlight it. And it'll all work just fine. And obviously, depending which flag you do, some of the flags, like if I did uh, main title, so like the the second one from the top, the racing one, it'd be split down the middle, be fine. The Puerto Rican one would be fine. The German flag or the you know a, a three horizontal would be fine. Australia fine. Uh, Scottish one fine. Ukrainian or double fine. Greek one would be almost fine. So yeah, you can get away with most of them. Oh, a star twinkle in the eye. I might be might be able to might be able to swing that in. But I'll get it really dark up top here. And pull some detail down from the eye. Down from the nose bridge. Eyes and the teeth are pretty much the hard part for most, so once you get that, and I'm going to come across here, we'll highlight this, come up that temple side. And again, if you're not quite, you know, comfortable freehand, you could also start doing this. We could, we could take this. And watch. I'm just gonna cut pieces, but not all the way. And I'm gonna cut this bottom jar off. If you have the bottom jar and top, and you can actually cut this. So if you have trouble understanding where the lines are or you're having trouble freehanding you can do this stuff so you can actually take the stencil line it up and now you can fold this back Yeah, Gerald, at the end I could add a little candy into the eyes and I do a little gleam just to brighten them up. Or even just bring, you know, the bright, because this is a, it's a semi-transparent illustration red. I can bring that red up in the eyes and once I get to the end, balance it. I think that could work as well.
And see, now you can use this. You could bring fold this over and just stencil that and bring that eyebrow back in soft if you don't want to freehand it. I'm going to add some little folds and like wrinkles to the flag and the head. I wish I tried learning this craft many years ago and I would pull the trigger. <laughs> You're never too old, man. Paint things you enjoy, it'll really come quick. Um, I think if I bring. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna. And just change some of the camera settings and let them a little bit more light in here. There we go. Yep, you just practice, man. You just keep on practicing and it just comes and the more times you paint things you like, it'll it'll really just it'll start coming together for you. Like I never knew video editing and cameras and shit. I always I was never great at it. Uh, and then I learned all this stuff. And <laughs> yeah, when I say I learned all this stuff is yeah, I wanna try to move I'll move this camera quick here. Just so you can see all the electronics and everything that we're using down here. We learned all this stuff to make it happen. You just learn it. Make it happen. You can do it. Just start doing little textures. This is not black. This is this is black mixed with a little candy purple. It's like one to one of uh, the deep purple and candy two o black, and then uh, mixed one to one with uh, forty fifty. Oh yeah, Patrick, you can't even see. Yeah, let me move this camera. This one you can really see. Look at the upper one. Let me see if I can actually get the whole thing. This might really mess everyone up. Sorry. But yeah, so that's the iPad. That's all the camera switchers. That's the stream deck, the recorder. That could, that's how I do all the all the sounds, and that's all here. All the different switching for all the different brands. All the screens that I can see what each camera is doing. And then I'm watching you guys on my iPad. I'm watching people on Facebook on this. The other camera's right there. Another TV in front of me that shows me what you're seeing. <laughs> Just a few things going on. Just a few things. Sorry if it's making anyone dizzy. Oops. Yeah, just a few things to deal with. All right. Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I do need 13 more fingers. That's why it's nice my daughter's up here because like all the different brands, like people ask me questions about, you know, this is the mask I use, the different masking. I have all these on key switchers and you know my paint list and different camera configurations i can switch that are all pre-programmed like that's the four up cam uh sponsors this is all stuff i've pre-programmed in reference images on and off that's another background cut and i can do picture in picture and there's a million things i can do oh yeah i always like this red frame one too it's kind of cool yeah I need to get with you. Oh yeah, yeah, we need to talk. For sure. It's got a little late, but hope all is well. Let's go. Ah, thank you, Flex. Yeah, like right now I'm learning 
So most of my video editing, I was just been using um, iMovie, you know, Apple's iMovie, which which is really good. It does a lot. It does pretty much mostly everything I needed to do. Um, but the way my system works now is I have four cameras and all these other videos. This all records at once. It's all timestamped to record um, all in one session so I can time everything and record. And I can go back in and I can post edit any of this to any camera, to any switcher, to any graphic, Yeah, you know. That's on top of what I already have recorded. Like I'm recording the program here, everything you're seeing. But I can go back in and I could like take this camera out and switch these two around and post edit or I can clip things in and out. Um, but that involves learning better software than Movie Maker because you have four 4K video sources plus backgrounds plus computers. Uh, so I've been learning DaVinci, which is a color grading and high end video editing software. All right, as far as teeth go, for my amateur friends, you see, I just went through freehand, and what I do, I usually start off the masking, and I do nice dagger strokes right up the middle to start carving the teeth. Then I loop over, then I kind of come up a little dagger strokes in the middle of the teeth like this. To build the tooth, okay? If you don't have that control, this is where the paper comes in. You could, and this is where I want to be able to edit these videos in later, and I can bring in these sections. And, uh, you know, more than one way to skin a cat type of thing. Using OBS stream. No, nope, uh, mine is a hardware streamer. So when you do OBS, everything has to run through your computer, and it gets really taxing on a machine, and they don't run great. Um... So mine is all done in hardware, all the encoding, everything. So as far as the computer thinks, it's just one webcam. And I can run that to OBS and stack even more stuff on top of it. Yeah, the Actually, OBS is running, and the only thing OBS is doing is the background animation. See the blue swirling background? Marshall, that's just running in OBS on a laptop, and then I can do that. But mine's all done on a... On, a, on my hardware switcher, which is a Black Magic Studio switcher. Which is a much better way to do it than OBS, because my computer is running like I'm just running a webcam. Um, so it's much lower taxing on your bandwidth, uh, and your computer doesn't have to struggle as much. And that allows me to also run, I'm running Facebook and, and YouTube at the same time. So, for you guys who don't have the freehand skill and you want to carve your teeth out, this is where you can just use your paper cut. I'm going to use Pinnacle Studio. Oh yeah, I messed with Pinnacle a while ago. Um, and I got into DaVinci because DaVinci is more native. It comes with uh, the Blackmagic Studio Switcher. Um, and it's a bit, from what I gather, it's a really good color grading. And it's free. So you can do that and shadow the teeth and carve your teeth out that way. So if you don't have the freehand skill to do these daggers, you can use a paper cut and you could use stencils like the pocket graphics and come up like this. And now I can do these edges. And just shape the teeth on the bottom. And get that all in. So there's plenty of ways to get it if you don't have the freehand chops yet. And you work your way into them. You know, I've been doing this 34 years. Yeah. So 34 years. I've been doing this so freehand is very second nature to me. Marshall, you're welcome. Yeah, if you got any questions on it, um, <clears throat> if you got any questions on the hardware stuff, yeah, let me know. Yeah, so uh, Final Cut's great. Mess with that a little bit. 
Uh, Premiere I have with Adobe. But my problem with Premiere, man, Premiere just chokes. And Adobe products tend to do this. Premiere chokes my, my hardware so bad compared to DaVinci. The way DaVinci works, and Premiere, they, they all work with proxy editing, where you're not trying to edit the full video, you're editing a proxy version until you hit render. For some reason, I think the DaVinci just does it cleaner. Like, it doesn't... Because I'm running four 4K videos at once, and editing them together. So if the proxy isn't really lean, man, I would need a computer so powerful. But the DaVinci seems to handle it better than uh, Premiere for me. But I don't know Premiere that well either, so a lot of it could just be my my ignorance. Like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, I can pretty much tell you every hidden secret in that program. I've used it so long. Video is new. <laughs> there you go, honey. Honey has got the special the special emojis for members only. Thank you, all my members. So if you guys don't know, we have a membership now. It's $2.99 a month. It's basically a thank you, and it helps me keep this thing going. But it also gives you a 10% off automatically in the store at all times. Um, and it gets you on the credits. And we say thank you to all the members. Each, each month, we'll keep an eye on this and add who's still on and keep track of it. And we're going to be adding some bigger tiers soon for some bigger members-only content um, that only you guys will see. So that's coming up in the near future. Yeah, this, I gotta really sit down and do a bunch of edits. Oh, and the other thing now you can do, and I need to get a new iPad. More cowbell, thank you, Patrick. Uh, um, is I want to replace my current iPad Pro to the next of the M2 ones because now what they're doing is with the M2 chips a uh, solid state drive in DaVinci with my speed editor I can edit everything on an iPad without having to tax the computer huge and it's super streamlined so I can almost have like a full editing station just for that I can kind of edit when I'm on the road too so that's something that's going to happen because I'm thinking when I go to SEMA this year, I want to bring a setup. Um, I thought you had a biomechanical tube pattern. Yep, yep. If you go to my store, mckayfineart.com, uh, go through the catalog, you'll find the biomechanical tube set, which is for Adobe Illustrator. And then there's also a biomechanical uh, project, which is the skull with the mask. But the tube set, the tube set's cool. I want to do another video on the tube set, and I haven't done that in a while. There's a bunch of short videos I need to do, and I got to do some basic intro, how to paint, because I've never really done a lot of that. And some of them I've done, I haven't. Like, I did the one a few weeks ago, and that was great, but I didn't edit it. Yes, it is a brush set. Yep. Um, so it's definitely a brush set. It will work with other programs, but not really as a brush. It'll work as a vector. But with, photo, with Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, you can actually resize and manipulate the tubes on a path and have it warp and stretch and go into perspective. Um, yeah, it's a really cool one. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, core highlights, core shadows. Starting to look really cool. Let's get back. I said I think I'm going to uh, do some cracks coming down here. I definitely think I'm going to scan these and maybe do some shirts or stickers with this design because I think it'll be really cool. We'll put a little some chips in the skull here. Looking so good, even sunglasses. Nice. Uproar Studio. So for me, um, 
so when I was out of high school, I got a full-time job. Uh, I was working at an insurance company, and I hated that. And I didn't paint for years. I, I, I was still doing some t-shirts here and there in the holiday season at the malls, and that was about it. Um, and then I started doing some cars here and there, and I was still working at the insurance company. I got a job at a tire store, and I started selling tires. And I got a little bit more back into it. <coughs> you know, car here, bike here, side money. You know, it was really good side money. I enjoyed it. And then I started getting a lot more work. I started getting a lot more work, and I started working a lot more side work. And then um, I had an opportunity. For me, I got lucky, so I didn't have to go like buy a big shop and build it at a huge risk. I had an opportunity to work out of the sign shop that I had been doing work for for a few years. So basically what I did is I set up shop in a corner of their shop, and when I didn't have any paint work, I could just work on sign work for them. So I always had income. And then slowly just started to swap over until it was full time. Yeah, that's kind of how I did it. Um, it was definitely a risk. It was a calculated risk. Um, uh, we, me and my wife, we were we were together. We weren't married yet. No kids, no house mortgage. So obviously, there's a lot less of a risk involved. I'm gonna take some of Gerald's advice. And I didn't mix it in candy, but I'm gonna make these eyes. A lot stronger red. Really bring out that red. And then we'll pop some nice highlights into it. Hey Brad, how you doing? And then, you know, uh, up raw, it was, <coughs> you know, it was ups and downs from there. Um, we'd have good years and bad years, good months and bad months, and, um, and every time I was about to give it up and say I can't do this without making enough money, I'd get an influx of work, and it would keep me in it for another few months, and it would keep me in it for another few months, and, you know, it was just as, it was like the godfather, as soon as I was about to leave, I got pulled back into it, uh, and just kind of waited out and realized I wanted to start doing more of a brand. It started really calculating it as a brand and not just uh, working hour to hour on a bike. Like, I wanted to build some shirts, designs, and we did the educational side. We started teaching seminars, um, added a lot more to it. So it wasn't just one, uh, I wasn't relying on just motorcycle or customer work. Uh, the other thing I did was I bought the plotter. So the plotter was another revenue stream. So I started doing truck lettering. Vehicle lettering. Scotty boy, you joined up. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the family. Much appreciated. Don't forget you get 10% off anything in the store. That includes the merchandise store. So if you look at the bottom of your phone, your computer, you'll see all the merch store. Um, all the t-shirts and hats and things like that. If you go to there, which is my Teespring store, uh, there's a code for that as well. If you have any issues with the code or find it, let me know. Now that you're a member, you should be able to go to your member section and see what the what the code is. Brighten the highlight these teeth a little more. Right now we still have a bit high bid on this of 200. This is gonna look really good all cleared up. Well, let's see what we're dealing with for the background. Because I think what I want to do is I want to blue the background a bit more brighter blue. I think you remember number 22. My personal goal this year, I want to get to at least 100 guys. You know, what, what, and what really happens with this stuff is it allows me to spend more time doing this video. Gary Sheese is also now a member. Thank you, sir. You know, that, I know it's only $2 a month. I mean, $2.99 a month. and doesn't sound like a lot. But if I get 100 of you guys in there and you all sort the channel, that's 300 bucks a month I get to work on this stuff. You know, when I'm not selling a piece, I can work on stuff in you know, 
it's still kind of get paid, you know. That's kind of the reason for the memberships. And I'm going to do more tiers. Oh, I like the way that looks. That looks cool. Um, so what I got to do is I got to tape this back together now because... Oh, no, I don't. I had saved this. Thank you, Gary, for joining up. For those who don't know, that's the membership section. You can join up and you can support the channel month to month. And like I said, we're going to be doing special announcements with just members only. There's going to be a bunch of little stuff we're going to be, we're going to be trying out. So, okay, now I guess this is the other benefit of the paper. I want to blue this out a little bit more. Patrick Richmond is a bid of two twenty-five. Thank you, sir. For first-time bidders, if you haven't got a painting, the way it typically works is I clear these in batches about every month or two. So after it gets done, this kind of goes into the back. I usually uh, do some detail work and do some cleanup work after the fact. Look at that! Oh, that blue makes it look even. Even shinier. Pops even more. Um, where is the bottom jaw? Because I want to get up inside the mouth to that blue color. is 275 thank you warlock for keeping that keeping track of that all right let's get some let's get a little background effect you know what i'm gonna do because like i love the way this one looks this one looks cool right that background glow we're gonna do something similar let's do let's do like this Specs. Honey is at three. Oof. Let's get a little Lavalley love in here.
blue. There we go. Have you ever done body paint? Yep. Done body painting quite a few times actually in my day. And one thing I always recommend is buy the right stuff. Don't use t-shirt paint. You may get away with it once in a while, but man, you get someone that's allergic to latex, you have a problem on your hands. So yeah, I've used a bunch of different body paints and liquid makeups and things like that. So once you question, have you ever funny painting? Yeah, so there's a lot of different body paints out there, especially with a kid, I recommend using proper body paint. Um, I think Pro Air is one of them. Um, you know who's got a really good uh, knowledge on that for a company is um, Maple, Maple Airbrush Supply up in Canada. Uh, she's really knowledgeable on body paint stuff. Uh, and obviously, Coast Airbrush, you can talk with Sig. Uh, if you can get a hold of Sig out there, Sig's a body paint master. Uh, he can give you a lot of recommendations for different brands and things like that. You want the American set. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my god, that's awesome. So I just want to get this a little bit more of a blue. I don't want it so bright white. Tone it down a little bit. Maybe I'll throw a little purple in there. What do you think, honey? Should we throw a little purple? You're the high bid. Scott Voss is a member now. Another down and dirty trickster. I think that's 23? Oh, we need two more. We can hit 25 tonight. That'd be cool. Cool, and be a quarter of the way there. Night 22. No, we were 21 coming into tonight. Then we had two more. So that's 22, 23. I think we're at 20, we're either 23 or 24 right now. Let's throw a little purple into this mix now. Thank you, Mr. Voss. Got three joints tonight. Yes, that's 24. So we're at 24 now. 24 strong. That's awesome. Not a bad way to come back from no voice. If you painted the flag and had the skull pushing up from behind. Yeah, that could be cool and have the flag kind of come all the way out. Yeah, that could be a cool project. You could probably add to that down the road. I've done something similar with skull puppet do fabric. So yeah, that could be cool. London paint! Number 25. Not sure about the new math, but 21 plus 3 is 24. And then I just had another one come on, so now we're at 25. Yeah, that's what I said. It was 21, I added 3, that was 24. And now I have one more that just came on, so that's the fourth. So I'll look later, but I'm pretty sure we're at 25 now. To where I want to be, and that is awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks for the support. Twenty-five strong.
Thank you, Sean. Sean's been a big supporter of this channel since the early days, too. And we're just keep growing it and growing it and growing it, and that's the plan. And man, I got so many plants for videos, guys. It's just a matter of sitting down in time to do them. Flex wear it now at 26. You guys rule. I'm gonna make it worth it. I'm gonna make you guys worth your time to be a member. And do lots of cool stuff. Lots of great videos. We're gonna start doing some. I'm gonna start polling you guys for some ideas. What you guys want to see. Not bad for an hour and a half, yeah. Got it back. Getting that momentum back. So let's see how we doing. You know, I almost today, but I thought it was gonna be way too cocky to try, is I had a Canadian one here. So I was gonna do a Canadian version. Um paint on a skull. But these could also be commissioned, so if someone wants one off the side, we can always do a commission that you don't have to bid on. If someone wants a specific country one, uh, we can work them out for a reasonable reasonable fund. But this is the collection series so far. The skull is the same size. This panel's a hair bigger. It's an inch bigger. That's about it. But same tone. One with eyes, one without. And if there are no more bids, then this one is going to Honey, and she, we will call this the what collection, Honey? The America Rican series? <laughs> I don't want to say something out of line. So, um, and now that I got this here, oh shoot, might as well. Just make sure I know we do a Canadian version. All right. If you want a Canadian version, you can always just do one and not have it live. I can just do one for you. So let me know. I'm going to brighten this guy up a little bit to make it match with this. Oh, and I never signed this one. So now we're going to sign them both. First one's first. Yeah, the water droplet's really cool. Ending bid is 300 for honey. We got a bunch of super chats, so thank you for all the super chats, everyone. Thank you for all the new members that just popped in. One thing I want to see for the members, especially, because I doing them live, I don't think is really worth it. I don't think many people will enjoy it. Um, but a lot of my Adobe Illustrator design and vector how-tos, I was thinking of doing as a members-only thing. And eventually I'll do more advanced ones for like higher tier. But I kind of want to get a start. So if some of you guys are interested, let me know on that in the community page. Because um, I think that could be a cool way to do some shorts. Some quick tips on how I do like Adobe Illustrator work. I'm going to tint over these signatures a little bit with that bluish purple. So Vic, it's right down the bottom. It'll say if you're on a you're on a if you hit the money thing, I think on an iPad, but it'll say join next to subscribe. Depends what you're on. You have thought of doing, have you thought of doing one as a USA? Oh, an Air Force flag? No, that could be cool. That could be a cool add-on one. Um, I've done like 15 different designs and I just haven't, I, you know, I think this is something I'll just I pop in and out of and do more and more down the road. 
but again, if someone, if there's a, if you want one of these done, if someone wants an original like this done, a specific flag, uh, these are pretty reasonable price to do for an original. Um, and if they're not part of a live feed, you know, you don't have to do bidding. We can just come up with a price you're comfortable with uh, and let me know if someone wants a specific flag one. And I think my goal, like I said, I'm going to do, um, I want to do some prints. So maybe I'll do a bunch and scan these and make like a sticker collection or maybe a shirt collection. I made a massive collection of DVDs. Uh, plotter Mastery is what I'm trying to get my hands on. You won't get Plotter Mastery. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are no longer in print. I do not have authorization uh, to reprint them. Is the problem because they're definitely Amherst Action Magazine. It's defunct. I don't have authorization to print new copies. And I have one more. I have my original copy and that's it. But I do plan on, and this is this year... I'm gonna because Plotter Mastery is really old now, and not that it's, the techniques aren't out of date, but there's some quicker ways to do it, some more efficient ways to do it. So I'm gonna be redoing Plotter Mastery here on this channel, um, and I may make it just part of the overall channel. It might be a members only section of the channel. I haven't decided yet, but I will be doing doing that. Um, I wish I could just get the permission just to release the original Plotter Mastery on YouTube for free. Um, but there's a whole legal, I don't know the legal issue with, with who owns what right now. So, yep. Yeah. yeah, Vic, if you have any issues, like when you go, if you're on a, if you're on a phone, sometimes it's harder to see where it is, but yeah, wherever you would normally subscribe to a channel, you can now do join, um, and, uh, become part of the crew. And we're going to grow this thing and keep this thing going week after week, month after month, and make this a really big channel is my goal. We're at 9,200 and something subscribers. Uh, my personal goal, I want 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and 100 members. I think that's doable. So share the love. Talk it up. Let me know what you guys want to see on the channel. Uh, some things you want to see and we're just going to make this bigger and bigger and grow it and grow it and uh, I'm going to also start doing um, some modeling not 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 modeling because that's not me uh, <laughs> uh, so model figures and tabletop gaming figures which I have a whole bunch here to paint um, which this is one I just oh. let's see if we can switch out here this is one I just finished up so you can see the detail in these damn things are quite ridiculous. Let's see if I can get in on that. Yeah. Yeah. So super detailed. So I'm going to start doing some of these. This is from Warhammer. Uh, and I might start doing some Star Wars and space modeling and just other stuff. That's not just airbrush on metal or artwork. I'm going to start doing some of these. So, so you can see the scale of this thing. And we got some pretty good detail going in. I wonder if I can get this one super zoomed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you can see all, all the little detail. This is the first one I completed. I did all the base work on it. But I have a whole ton of them. Brad Mummery, thank you, sir. Welcome to the family. I'm going to grow the channel. I'm going to keep growing this. And, yeah, so if you guys are interested in seeing more of this stuff as well, or any other type of artwork, design work, um, even if you want to do, like, you know, one night we can do, like, a, just a Q&A seminar on business tactics and, you know, the reality of what it's like to be a, you know, full-time artist or if you want to do a part-time. I'm in to doing, hold on a second, let me switch up. I'm down for doing anything that the bigger we grow this channel, the more we can do. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being patient for the past couple weeks for me being sick. Um, and I was sick, man. I never, I get sick and I get man flu, as my wife calls it. Uh, and I'm down for like 24 hours of shakes and trembles and I'm a baby and then I'm over it. You know, usually the next day, man, this, this summer flu I had, it wasn't COVID or anything like that. This summer flu had me down for six days. Chills, coughs, colds, congestion, the works. My wife had it, now my daughter has it. Um, so, man, yeah, it's uh, 
Uh, I can get some tips. Oh, nice, man. I Yeah, I'd never done really any wood carving. My grandfather was a carver. Did a lot of wood carving and sculpture and signs and uh, like animal sculptures. I got one over here, actually. Um... Yeah, you know, if you want to do a do a mashup partner up, maybe you do a carving, I could paint it. Or you can do something like that and how to do some different tricks. So we could do some stuff like that. I'm into growing this channel in all different ways. Um, different techniques and different how-tos and problem solving. I know a lot of the industry is a problem solving. It's it's a hard thing to learn, it's a hard tool, and there's always questions and it's forever changing, especially nowadays with paint changes, medium changes and everything. So and availability and brushes. There's a lot of options out there, so feel free to ask questions anytime. You can get me on Instagram at Scott McKay, uh, Twitter or X, whatever it is. It's under TA Graphics. I'm never on it, uh, but Instagram. You can always get me TikTok, Facebook, in here. Um, and I, I'm thinking of joining that, what, that that other one, Threads, which is that other new one. So um, yeah, I'm always reachable. So reach out. Let me know if you have any questions, things you want to see on the channel. And I think we are going to leave it at that. Honey, you are the proud owner of the America Recon collection of skulls. And I'll get these things cleared up and sent off to you really soon. And we'll start paying some other ones and maybe start doing some shirts and swags. And don't forget about the merch store with shirts and hats. That's 10% off for all you down dirty tricksters. There's a code if you have any issues. Oh, you mean you mean that? You mean you mean that one? I have right there, which is the perfect grade Millennium Falcon. You mean that? Yeah, I have that. <laughs> I have it with all the uh, all the photo etch. Oh, my plan for that, uh, Mr. Voss, is I'm doing a whole Death Star diorama. So I'm thinking it's going to be about 38 inches long by about a foot tall trench with uh, the X-Wing and, and the two TIE Fighters and Darth Vader's Advance and then maybe having the perfect grade coming in all to scale and lit. That's kind of a, That's kind of a plan as well. Because I have in that cabinet, in that cabinet, in that one, I have all the Bandai models. <laughs> Pretty much every single one I have a problem. Uh, so, yes, we can definitely do some modeling um, in that kind as well. So, awesome night, guys. Uh, this came together really cool. Give everyone another look at both of them. They are good to go. Thank you all the support, all the patience. Thank you all the new members. And all the super chats, keep them coming. And let me know what you guys want to see next week. We will make something cool next week. Thank you for an awesome night. And Warlock, we need to talk about some video stuff and some web stuff too. I need some help and we can we can talk about that. So thank you everyone for all your support. I'll give Kaylee your love, tell you y'all asking for her. She's getting better. Um, she just needs to get over it like we did. So that is all. Have an awesome night. See you next time you brush down dirty tricks. Keep on painting. Go create some stuff. Even if it stinks, it's better than nothing. Move on to the next one. Talk to you all soon. Bye.